Hey everyone, in this video we'll be looking at chapter 2 of Dive into Python by Mark Pilgrim, which is called Your First Python Program, and we will do that diving in by introducing the functional programming aspect of Python with an example at page 14. So open a new file and name it simplemultiply.py, or you can take this one, which I'll put in a GitHub repository and link to with the other chapter examples, and just just write this function here. Functions in Python are declared using the keyword def. It's dynamically typed compared to other programming languages, which means that you don't have to declare the return data type and the function doesn't even have to return anything at all. If the return keyword is not stated, the function returns a none data type. Functions receive arguments through parentheses, and arguments can be any pieces of data that the function is going to consume and manipulate, whether it's translating or transforming or in in some other way processing. So in this example here, the variables num1 and num2 are arguments to the function multiply. One of the key features of Python is readability. This is achieved through enforcing indentation and emphasis on doc strings, which is a basic definition of what the function does. So in this case, the doc string is, is uh, right here. Multiplies two numbers and returns the product. They are, they are not necessary, actually, but, but they are important and available as attributes of a function, which is accessible during runtime. They're declared using triple quotes and should come after the first colon. So this one right here. And as you'll see in a minute, if you do print multiply and then dot doc, it will actually go ahead and like and give you multiplies two numbers and returns the product. So let's slide on into the terminal now. And if you are if you open a Python shell and enter import simple multiply, that will load this file here and it will run the two commands that I have here. So multiply two numbers and then tell you what the doc string is. And if you want to then call that and take advantage of this multiply function, the way that you do that is like it shows here, print and then the module name, which in this case is simple multiply and then dot the function name and the params that you want to pass to it. And it will return the product of those two numbers. It's important to, to prepend the module name before saying before calling the function that you want. If you don't do that, as I learned the hard way at one point, you'll get this. And you'll say, why is it not defined? It's totally defined. I imported it. But it's because it requires you to, to have the name of the module there. As stated earlier, Python enforces good coding practices by requiring that you use indentation. Indentation makes code more readable to you and others and, and of course, is an important part of making the code work properly. Python uses a full colon for identifying a code block. So after every full colon, Python expects a space or spaces before the next statement. And the number of spaces or tabs are up to you, but they have to be equal or an error will be raised, which is an indentation error, believe it or not. And most IDEs will enforce this for you, so you can, you can not worry about that too much. There's a neat trick that you can do, and as you will see in Simple Multiply, that's useful for testing purposes. When you run a Python file, its name attribute is main, but it main, like the name of it is main. But when you import a module to use it, the name attribute is something else. And so you can put tests in that block and they'll run when you call the file directly, but not when you're using the module elsewhere. This is useful for testing your code's functionality and output, which is covered more deeply in future chapters. So let me just put that in here for you. So we learned that Python is, everything in Python is treated as an object and all objects have names, doc strings, variables, these are attributes, right? I should say they all have attributes 
such as name, doc strings, variables, and methods, which are functions defined in the module. That's it for chapter two. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section, and I'll see you all in the next video.